everybody. It's Mrs. Danny. How are y'all doing? Oh, I hope you're doing good. Okay, we're going to get right to it on uh, the lesson tonight. Before I do, we've got, I've got a couple announcements. First off, for those doing the Versathon, awesome. I'm so proud. Of, I'm, I know you're working hard, but I have a challenge for you tonight. I, that's the kitten. <laughs> she wants to join him. Okay, so my challenge to you tonight is John chapter 3, 16 through 18. So it's not just John 3, 16. It's 16 through 18, okay? Oh, hey, dear sweetie. You're going to come help? Oh, hey. Yeah, she, she wants attention. She's a cuddle. A cuddler. Okay. Also, uh, as far as your books are concerned... I think y'all, uh, from what I've been hearing, y'all have been doing great. I do need you to do something for me, though, okay? If you complete your book, and I need, and that includes if you complete silver and or gold, gold and the go sections, I need your parents to email me or message me, or at least tell one of the leaders, Miss um, Terry, Miss Angel, and Miss Jamie have taken on trying to uh, contact your families at least once a week. So if you can't answer the email, if your parents don't answer the email I sent, answer them. I need to know. I'm trying to make sure that we have the awards. I want to make sure I've got everyone's awards. It's kind of a way to double check since I can't see your books, you know, right now. So let get your parents and you can your, just tell your parents what to email me. You guys know, okay? Also, what we're going to do is during whenever we do the award ceremony, bring your books with you. We're going to look over them real quick, okay? So you guys know what to do. Now, sadly, next week will be our last lesson, and then we're on summer break, believe it or not, because we're done with the book. So yay and sad at the same time, but it's summer break. A little different this year. Also, I want to encourage y'all. Uh, for those of you who might not have known, the, the uh, church is live streaming their services. You can access them on Facebook or via their, the church's website. But what's also interesting is not only do you have the Sunday school and church service, at 9.30 in the morning is something called Pop-Tarts and Pajamas. If you don't know about it, this is where it's a Sunday school lesson. And you can show up. It's kind of neat because you get to see your Sunday school teachers in pajamas. It's, it's been interesting. Say the least. So, where else can you show up for Sunday school in your pajamas and eating your cereal, or in my kid's case, drinking coffee? So, I wanted to encourage you to uh, tune into that. And you know, I think it's it's really wonderful what they've been doing. So, I got my notes, and we're gonna get right into our lesson tonight. Now, we are in four point seven, which is discovery of grace for the. For y'all, it is page 238. Leaders, if you're in your leader's book, it's 234, okay? So this is the discovery of grace. Now, before we keep, go any further, we need to discuss what is grace. Grace is giving someone something that they don't deserve. Now, a lot of times this is confused with mercy. It's actually very different. Mercy is not giving someone a punishment they deserve. Whereas grace, again, is giving someone something good they don't deserve. So it's, a, it's different. We need to make sure we understand the difference between these two terms. Now, here's the thing. God loves us, and he offers his grace to everyone through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, and most of you have this memorized. Matter of fact, this used to be... The very first verse you memorized when you came into, Ch uh, well, now it's called TNT. Back when it was chums and pals, third and fourth grade, this was in, well, now it's called the start zone. It used to be the entrance exam, or the, we called it the TP because we had a Native American theme. But this was the first verse you memorized. It was the first verse, this is the first Bible verse I ever memorized. It's Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, but here's the thing. And a lot of people uh, kind of get this, conf forget about this sometimes or don't understand. God never intended his grace to be a one-time thing or event in our life. He wants us to continue to grow as Christians. 
and a lot of people, some people will get saved and then they don't grow. That's not what God intended. He wanted us to grow. Now, does our salvation depend on that? No, but we always want to improve and be more than what we are. So, but here's an interesting question. And I got this many, many years ago when I was talking to a, a TNT group and they're like, but Miss Danny, how will I know if I'm growing? That's a really good question. You know, it's easy to tell sometimes like physical. We can tell when someone's growing physically. Take a look at this. This was a onesie my sister made for the kids uh, when my first was born. It says future wanna cubby. It doesn't say puggles because at the time puggles didn't exist. Matter of fact, puggles didn't come in until my kids were too old for puggles. It's okay. I'm good. But <laughs> so you can see this that my sister made. And yes, both my girls wore this. And then this is their Trek uniform. The church we had back home actually had Trek, and this was one that I designed. And this was our uniform, this t-shirt. Now it's pretty easy to see how much they'd grown. You know, we have height charts, we have scales. It's easy to tell when you've grown intellectually, you, through knowledge, because you know stuff. You can maybe win at Trivial Pursuit. I don't know, do people still play that game? I don't know. I still have it, believe it or not. But <laughs> you have more knowledge. You know, kind of know when you grow emotionally because you're able to handle things better. But how do you know if you're growing spiritually? And it's a really good question. Here's the answer. Because our life produces fruits or results. You know, you hear this, what's, you know, the... Our, our lives produce fruit, good fruit, bad fruit. What that's talking about is results. The, go back to your memory verse, which is Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, again, fruit of the Spirit is results. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, uh, that's patience, gentleness, goodness, kindness, faith, Meekness, and we've talked about meekness in the last lesson. That's not weakness, that's power under control. Meekness, temperance, which is self-control. Against such, there is no law. These are godly attitudes that should show in the lives of those of us who have accepted and follow Jesus Christ as our savior. Now these are nine godly attitudes. And remember what we said, our attitudes will affect our actions, okay? So we need to watch that. If we have a bad attitude, our actions will usually kind of show that. Now, the closer we grow to Jesus Christ, the more these attitudes will be on display in our life. And, you know, as believers, and I've used this example before, <laughs> we are, okay, I want you all to think of movie posters. You know, if you go to the movie theater, or if you look at the movie theater, you know, you see all these posters, okay? And the whole, what is the point of a movie poster? The movie poster is to get you interested in that movie. They want to pique your interest. They want to pique your curiosity. Our lives should be the same thing. We are essentially posters for Jesus. When others see us, we want them to want to know about Christ. They should look at us and go, you know, they have, they're different. They have something I don't have. I want to know about this. Now, does that mean we're always perfect? No, trust me. Okay, you can ask my mother-in-law. <laughs> one of the ways, and one of the many ways we do that is we can also learn from others. You know, if you don't have a lot of patience, it helps to get close to or use an example as someone who does in your church maybe or someone you know that does have a lot of patience. Try to learn from them. I have there's a lady in our church and I'm not going to, you know, give her name who is just the most incredible example for me for meekness and I try to hang around her a lot and talk to her because I want to learn from her and her attitude rubs off on me. She's got a really positive attitude even though a lot has happened in her life. And I gain a lot from her and a lot of encouragement. So I want you to think about this, that this week. I want you to think about what is something that you could improve on in your life? We can all improve, none of us are perfect. So 
how about this week or this month, focus on one of these godly attitudes that you find in your memory verse. Work on that and then go to the next one. And this is a lifelong journey. This isn't just something you're gonna do in a year, a month, a week, whatever. This is a lifelong journey. Trust me, I'm almost 50 years old and there's several of these I really need to work on, okay? Anyway, I love you guys. That's our lesson. And I've got game time all set for you. I hope you enjoy it. And again, unfortunately, we only have one more lesson to do and then we're done with our books and you're on summer break. But anyway, I love you guys. Uh, also, if y'all need anything, uh, prayers, whatever, email me or message me. Most of y'all have my phone number. Most of y'all know where I live, but I wouldn't you know, show up right now, obviously. But message me, okay? You, you can message me on Facebook. Now that I'm uploading these to YouTube, I've actually been getting messages through YouTube. So you can message me there. You can email me, call me, text me. But get in touch with me if you need anything, especially prayer. And be sure to pray Remember to pray before the lessons begin. Okay, guys, I love you. I'm going to get game time set up, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Bye. Hello there. I am Miss Sarah, and this is Miss Elizabeth. We are going to be your game leaders tonight. And uh, first of all, we're going to go through the supplies that you will need. First of all, you will need a ping pong paddle. If you do not have that, then you will want a tennis racket. If you do not have either, then you will need uh, some painter's tape, a ruler, doesn't matter what kind, and a plate. It can be plastic or paper. Do not do ceramic plate. That will not turn out well. No, it won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to take your plate face down, ruler on top, and then you're just going to take some tape, if I can find the end of it. Here you go. And then you're just going to tape it on. And you're probably going to want to do more than one, and that's going to be your paddle. The next bit of supplies you're going to need is thank you, a balloon. If you do not have a balloon, then um, thank you. A lot of people are doing mail orders, so uh, you may get a package with some of these in it. Just take one, this will also work. And then you can also take a Ziploc bag, blow ah. air into it, <laughs> and then zip it up, and that will work also. Yeah. If you don't have any of that, aluminum foil, and wrap it up, and you can make a ball out of this. So tonight's game is going to be really, really simple, if I may have the balloon. Thank you. You can start. And what we are going to be doing, which one do you want? Go quick. Thank you. You're going to be playing ping pong. Go ahead. Off. Oh, yay. <laughs> Point for me. And you're going to be hitting the balloon to each other. And that's your game time for tonight. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and the animal went after it. Okay, I actually like that better. Oh! <laughs> 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 oh, just get a cat. You step on the cat. Oh, where's the kitten? Oh. Ah! Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Dangerous. 